Hey, I'm Mandy from Deep Lizard. In this episode, we'll use our fine-tuned VGG16 model for inference to predict on images in our test set. All right, we are jumping right back into our Jupyter Notebook. Again, making sure that all the code is in place and has run from the previous episodes as we will be building on the code that has been run there. So first things first is that we are going to be using the model to get predictions from our test set. So to do that, we call model.predict, which we have been exposed to in the past. Recall that this model here is our fine-tuned VGG16 model. And to predict, we are passing our test set, which we have stored in test batches, and we are setting our verbosity level to zero, as we do not want to see any, outp any output from our predictions. Now, recall previously we talked about how we did not shuffle the test set for our cat and dog image data set, and that is because we want to be able to access the classes here in an unshuffled order so that we can then pass in the unshuffled classes that correspond to the, well, sorry, the unshuffled labels that correspond to the unshuffled test data. We want to be able to have those uh, in a one-to-one -one mapping where the labels actually are the correct unshuffled labels for the unshuffled uh, data samples, we want to be able to pass those to our confusion matrix. So this is the same story as we saw whenever we were using our CNN that we built from scratch a few episodes back. Uh, we did the same process. We're using the same data set, recall. And so now we are plotting this confusion matrix in the exact same manner as before. So this is actually the exact same line that we used to plot the confusion matrix a few episodes back when we plotted it on this same exact test set for the CNN that we built from scratch. And just a reminder from last time, recall that we looked at the class indices of the test batches so that we could get the correct order of our cat and dog classes to use for our labels for our confusion matrix. So we are again doing the same thing here. And now we are calling the scikit-learn plot confusion matrix, which you should have defined earlier in your notebook from a previous episode. And to plot confusion matrix, we are passing in our confusion matrix and our labels defined just above, as well as a general title for the confusion matrix itself. So now let's check out the plot so that we can see how well our model did on these predictions. So this is what the third or fourth time that we've used a confusion matrix in this course so far. So you should be pretty uh, normalized to how to read this data. So recall the quick and easy way is to look from the top left to the bottom right along this diagonal, and we can get a quick overview of how well the model did. So the model correctly predicted a dog for 49 times for um, images that were truly dogs. And it correctly predicted a cat 47 times for images that truly were cats. So we can see that one time it predicted a cat when it was actually a dog. And three times it predicted a dog when images were actually cats. So overall, the model incorrectly predicted four samples. So that gives us um, 96 out of 100 correct, or let's see, 96 correct predictions out of 100 total predictions. So that gives us an accuracy rate on our test set of 96%. Not surprising given what we saw in the last episode for the high level of accuracy that our model had on the validation set. So overall, this fine-tuned VGG16 model does really well at generalizing on data that it had not seen during training, a lot better than our original model for which we built from scratch. Now, recall that we previously discussed that the overall fine-tuning approach that we took to this model was pretty minimal since cat and dog data was already included in the original training set for the original VGG16 model. But in upcoming episodes, we are going to be doing more fine-tuning more fine-tuning than what we saw here for VGG16, as we will be fine-tuning another well-known pre-trained model, but this time for a completely new data set that was not included in the original data set that it was trained on, so stay tuned for that. By the way, we are currently in Vietnam filming this episode. 
If you didn't know, we also have a vlog channel where we document our travels and share a little bit more about ourselves. So check that out at The Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. Also, be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode, along with other resources available on deeplizzard.com. And check out the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind, where you can gain exclusive access to perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.